Hello and welcome to all of you. You're watching France 24's tech show. I'm Julia Seeger. In this edition, as Apple celebrates the 10th anniversary of the iPhone, we take a look at just how much smartphones in general have changed our everyday lives. Plus, bringing to life Wally, the Pixar character. In Test 24, we'll introduce you to Cosmo, an adorable robot by US based company Anki that uses AI computer vision to understand people and its environment. One more thing. With that phrase, Tim Cook paid tribute to Apple's late co-founder Steve Jobs for the 10th anniversary of the iPhone. During the event in Cupertino, California, he unveiled Apple's latest and certainly most expensive new version of the device, the iPhone X, calling it the biggest leap forward since the first iPhone. Well, to understand just how much of a revolution this new device is, let's now turn to our in-house expert, Dan and Jake Hadelkar. Hello, Dan. Hi, Julia. So this new phone, it's all glass, uh, there's no more home button, and it unlocks with facial recognition. That's right. Perhaps the most striking feature of iPhone X is the removal of the home button. Now we are so used to having the home button. For example, if some website is taking a long time to load, you just press the home button and you're on your home screen. And to unlock it as well. With, Absolutely. With but with this, now you'll have to swipe the screen to go back on your home screen. It could take a bit of, uh, I don't know, some. you need to get used to it because it's not right. natural because we are so used to that that escape hatch, as we call the, the home button. So that's one thing. Secondly, the removal of the home button also means that there won't be any touch ID uh, authentication, fingerprint authentic authentication. So instead of that, we have the face ID. So instead of using your fingerprints, now you'll have to uh, look into the into the screen. So it's or even faster. You just pick it up and you, and you look at and it. It scans and your face and the right. screen gets unlocked. So yes, that's one of the most striking features. And now there's also the, the wireless charging that's new. That's right. Uh, among the many new things is uh, the option of wireless charging on iPhone 10, which exists in uh, the Samsung line of phones, but not in iPhone yet. So that's something to look forward to. Also, uh, the display is considered to be the sharpest uh, for an iPhone. So it boasts around 2 million pixels. So that is an, uh, that is an upgrade. And there's an upgrade on the camera as well. It has a 12 megapixel uh, wide angle camera at, uh, at the uh, rear. And last but not least, we've been hearing about these emojis. What are they? Well, emojis essentially, they allow you to uh, create short clips of yourselves and you can send them to your friends and families as emojis. And because of Apple's facial recognition technologies, it will enable uh, to rather these emojis, they, it will help emojis uh, resemble the exact expression, the expression that you're so making. So they'll imitate you. A absolutely, yeah. Very well, thank you, Dan. So it has already been 10 years since the iPhone was first launched, a launch that marked the start of the smartphone revolution. Since this device has literally changed every aspect of our daily life, as Laurent Berstecher explains. For some, it's the first thing they reach for when they wake up. Others use it to pay for their shopping, and lots of people just can't put it down, even on the beach while they're on holiday. In the space of just a few years, smartphones have burrowed their way into our lives, and today 65% of French people own one. I use my phone all the time. I have it turned on 24-7. Even at night, I keep it next to me. The revolution started in 2007, when Steve Jobs gave this presentation to launch the first iPhone. But what we're going to do is get rid of all these buttons and just make a giant screen. Ten years on, the smartphone has slowly pushed out or replaced many household objects, like books, TV, games and music, diaries, computers, pocket flashlights, alarm clocks, radios, and even the wristwatch. It's had a knock-on effect on consumer habits. French people buy fewer digital cameras and fewer GPS appliances. It's revolutionized video games. In 2013, consumers used mostly consoles and computers, closely followed by smartphones. By 2016, that trend had been reversed, with more gamers playing on their phones than any other platform. It's also seen the launch of thousands of applications and social networks, which allow for non-stop communication, whether we need it or not. A lot of times, we turn on the phone without really knowing what we're looking for. And then we'll make a choice depending on the applications, the messages or the notifications that we get. 
This scientist has been observing the way our brains react to smartphones. He says they could cause behavioral changes and even pose a risk of addiction. There are certain mechanisms in the brain that make it get used to a lot of sources of distraction. And when the brain suddenly finds itself in a situation where there are fewer distractions, it will start seeking out novelty. It will seek out contact. Go look for the phone in the pocket or look around to find distractions. So yes, there will be more and more difficulty in stabilizing that person's concentration span. Another concern is that we begin favoring the screen over our real lives. A danger that seems ever-present. According to recent studies, the French currently check their phones 26 times a day on average. And moving on now to the Frankfurt Auto Show, where car makers made their share of announcement of new models, including one that's so exclusive that only 275 units will be produced. Dan, tell us more about this new supercar. It's called Project One. It's being developed by Mercedes. And it essentially is a Formula One car on the road. All the technology has been derived from Formula One. So for example, the amount of power that this car will get is almost similar to what a Formula One car has. Uh, it's equivalent to 1,100 horsepower, which is a lot of power. And the interesting part about this technology, similar to what happens in Formula One, is that so much power is derived from a comparatively uh, small engine. It's only 1.6 liter V6 engine. It's not a massive engine for, to you know, generate so much power. But of course, there are four electric motors, there's a turbocharger, and all this package enables you, if you happen to buy one, right. to zoom and reach speeds in excess of 300 kilometers per hour. That's almost the same as what Formula One uh, car does on straight lines. I'm pretty sure it's very expensive, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's going to cost uh, $2.8 million, wow. but there are only 275 of them, and reportedly all of them have been booked. So I don't think any of us will either so no chance probably, I can get, one. Yeah, get a hand <laughs> on one of them. And the other interesting part about it is that uh, the body, if you look at its aerodynamics, it's again inspired from Formula One. The body is made of carbon fiber, extremely light, very strong. And as you see, the aerodynamic efficiency is it's, it's incredible. So all these factors combined together make it a dream supercar. And now my favorite part about any auto show is really the concept cars because they boast these, uh, these outrageous designs and they're packed with all these tech innovations. Uh, is there one in particular that caught your eye? Uh, I mean, I've, I found this one by Renault uh, called Symbios quite interesting because, uh, I mean, I'm not going too much into... Uh, the power aspect of this car. It's more about uh, the sharing of energy. So this car is essentially an extension of your home. It is a fusion of uh, a car and your living and the living space. Mm -hmm. So what it does is that, uh, okay, let's start with the specifications. So, so for, it, for example, it is an autonomous car. So mm -hmm. it, I mean, you also have an option of manual driving, but if you don't want to be bothered about driving, so you put it on an autonomous mode, it is electric uh, propulsion. The, the advantage about putting it on autonomous mode is that you can swivel, the interiors can be changed, so you can swivel the seats. And face and each other. Face right. each other, or you can just uh, take a look at the landscape instead of bothering about negotiating traffic and you know all other hassles that come with driving. So that is taken care of. And secondly, the reason why I say it uh, shares, or it's an extension of your home, is because you can literally take this car in your house and you it gets connected to the energy grid, so there's a there's a symbiosis of energy between your house and this car, and they complement each other. So for example, the house will, or whatever, the energy in your house, it will uh, perhaps charge this car, and vice versa. So if there is a power failure or some, or some other your problems, car the can car can charge. Your house. Exactly, they, it can take care of essential equipments in your house. So that is something that uh, Renault has presented in, in the Frankfurt Auto Show. Thank you, Dan. Time for test 24 now. U.S.-based company Anki is bringing to life Wally, the Pixar character, with its latest robot Cosmo. It's a toy, but it's also the promise that AI can indeed be a genuine source of joy. What seems very special about Cosmo is the fact that it uses uh, AI computer vision to, to scan its environment and people. Absolutely. There are many ways of uh, playing with Cosmo, and I really love this toy. It, it is essentially a toy robot. 
But what you can do with it is amazing because it is quite a complex uh, product. I mean, the developers, they needed more than 1.2 million lines of code to bring this robot to life and it displays uh, 536 animations. So even though it's a toy, there's a lot of engineering, there's a lot of uh, right. yeah, uh, coding gone behind it. So just, I'll just give you an example. There are different modes of playing with it. So right now I'm uh, in the exploration mode. So you can control uh, Cosmo with okay. your iPad. So as I move my iPad, it moves as well. Secondly, it also scans. So if, for example, here it's scanning whatever uh, it's seeing and you can see it on the iPad. So I'll just- so scanning the studio right now. Absolutely. Now it will look at you. It recognizes uh, human faces. And it will soon, as you can see here, so it's scanning my face right now. Yeah, it sees you. See, there you go. <laughs> he just so that's said the facial Julia. recognition um, technology that it possesses. And uh, this is one mode. There are many other different ways of uh, using this. So for example, it's a great way to teach kids how to code. So here you can see you can prepare a new, and just by putting blocks, in a sequential fashion. So here and, so for example, here I have put some blocks about motion, so it moves and then it does the same. So that's very useful for uh, kids to, just to get an introduction on how coding is right. done. And the more you play with it, the more the robot learns. Absolutely, that's, right. the, that's the basic idea. It's not a pre-programmed robot. It reacts to its surroundings, it learns, and then the more, I mean, right now it says, hello, Julia, but if you interact with it more, it will come up with different phrases. And the whole conversation, on. maybe. Absolutely, and these blocks are essentially for playing, so you can play different games with the robot. So uh, there's something one called tapping game, and so once you do that, the ro robot and you, basically, you have different scores, and whoever wins, wins, and then the robot, it again expresses itself. So yes, it's it's, Could be it's a very a reacting robot. Very nice Christmas gift. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dan. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech 24. But do stay with us here on France 24.